Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Giselle and as you probably know, I review fragrances. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I truly hope you enjoy my content. Guys, today I have part one of fragrances that nobody talks about. And I want to make a little disclaimer here. When I say fragrances that nobody talks about, um, I'm not really saying this literally because there are millions and millions and millions of videos uploaded every day. So it would be impossible to gauge that. But the fragrances I'm gonna talk about today are fragrances that usually you don't see people talking about them, right? They don't have any hype. Many people don't even know they exist. And I truly think they deserve some love. That's why I'm here making justice for these fragrances. And this is part one. So if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. So let's get into it. And the first fragrance I have here is Broom du Matin by Fragrance Dubois. I think this is the most underrated fragrance from the house and it's stunning, guys. It is absolutely stunning. It's fresh. This is the most elegant and sophisticated fresh fragrance I've ever tried and that I have in my collection. It's super, super sophisticated for its category. It has great lasting power. It has rose, it has peonies. It's delicious. It has sandalwood. I think sandalwood gives this fragrance a lot of depth. Otherwise, it would be uh, more airy, more like a typical fresh fragrance. It's super clean, it's crisp, but it's not soapy, it's not waxy. It's delicious. It also has peach, it has plum. It's very, very, very beautiful. It reminds me of fresh cut grass early in the morning with the tiny water droplets you get early in the morning from the dew. And this is what this reminds me of. Super, super dewy, very, it's very invigorating, very classy. This is a super safe fragrance. You can wear this fragrance absolutely for everything. You can wear this fragrance on an early flight. I always say that, I always make this comparison because you know, in airplanes, when we get back to, well, we are starting to get back to slightly to normal again. Um, what I'm trying to say is that usually in planes, in aircraft, the space is very limited, ventilation is really bad, so you have to be mindful of what you're wearing. And this is a fragrance you could wear during an early flight, like a 3 a.m. flight, and you will be safe. And this is a fragrance totally safe for, for the office. It's absolutely versatile, stunning. I get massive compliments when I wear this. I feel super put together, super chic when I wear this fragrance. You can't imagine. I love it. This is one that I will always have in my collection. I absolutely love Broom du Matin. It's a very aquatic fragrance, but not like the type of 90s fragrances, right? With the cologne note that I talk about in so many videos, so I don't want to bore you guys. But this is an aquatic, a dewy fragrance without having that cologne, watermelon type of note. It's very, very fresh. It makes me thirsty. When I smell this, it makes me thirsty. This is a fragrance that you can pull off all year round. It's perfectly good in the winter time. It's super crisp and super clean during the winter, but it's also amazing, amazing during the summer in very hot and humid days or nights. So yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Brom du Matin by Fragrance Dubois. So guys, my second fragrance is Isia La Nuit by Sisley. You probably know I am a big fan of Sisley. Sisley is a high-end skincare and cosmetics brand from France. And I love their fragrances. And this is no exception. This is very new. It's been launched in 2021. It's like the big sister of Isia. This is Isia La Nuit. And I also have Isia. I review Isia in another video. I'll link it here. It's both are amazing. This is like the big sister. This is deeper. This is more mysterious. This is darker. This is more appropriate for nighttime. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous scent. This is a very sophisticated. This is a Chypre floral. It's a musky, woody type of scent. Absolutely stunning. It's slightly balsamic, slightly ambery, especially in the dry down because some of the base notes are Patchouli, vanilla, ambroxan, and labdanum. And ambroxan has like an ambery type of accord. 
in lab denim also has an ambery upcourt so you can expect to have a very ambery dry down together with patchouli and vanilla which are also base notes and those are the notes that will stay with you for the longest time so as a top notes we have black currant we have cardamom cardamom is really not prominent at all here even if you don't like cardamom please please try this because you won't even pick the cardamom it's very very light and Again, this, the cardamom is in the top notes and the top notes are the notes that disappear more quickly, right? So you, even if you can pick some cardamom, it will disappear in a matter of minutes. It also has magnolia, one of my favorite flowers. It has rose, it has frisias. It's absolutely beautiful. It's unbelievable beautiful. Actually, the inspiration for this fragrance was a very rare type of rose found in the backyard of the house of the founder of Sisley. So it's this, it has a whole meaning behind. The bottle, it's a, it's a work of art. The mist, it's super thin. I hope you could see it, but it's super, super, super thin. That's another indicator of the quality of the fragrance. This smells super luxurious, super elegant, super, super sophisticated. Once again, this is a case when a designer fragrance has niche quality. And I want to make this point here because some people, especially if you're just getting into the fragrance world, please don't be fooled. Don't think that the only way to smell sophisticated or elegant is buying and spending a lot of money in niche fragrances because it's not true. A niche house means that they specialize just in fragrances. And yes, supposedly, the raw materials, the ingredients are of better quality, and so is the packaging, the atomizer, and everything surrounding the final product, right? However, that doesn't mean much because they have designer fragrances that have niche quality and they even perform better than many niche fragrances I have. So please be mindful when you buy your fragrances. Don't, don't beat up yourself because you can't buy this or you can't buy that and those super expensive fragrances. You don't have to honestly give certain designers a try and i can tell you there are many designers out there that have niche quality fragrances and as i said at the beginning this is like the original easy a big sister mysterious sexy darker but still super sophisticated and actually one thing that i truly love about sisley is that their fragrances smell unique okay they don't rinse and repeat any fragrance from, from Sisley smell very unique in on its own. It, it won't remind you of anything you have smelled around. So that's what I like. They, they are not copycats. They are not trying to make dupes or anything. They do their own thing. And I think that's why I love them so much. And that's why they have many, many fans around the world because they do their own thing and they have really nailed their fragrance line. Amazing, amazing fragrance. Give it a try. Isia Lanui. So guys, the next fragrance that I consider it's super beautiful and nobody talks about is Orchid Powder by Montal. I love the bottle. The colors are just stunning. So this is a beauty. This is a white yellow floral combo with coconut, orchid, and basically that's it. The official site doesn't say what type of flowers it has, but when you find this powderiness, usually it is due to the iris, sometimes the oris, and sometimes heliophoro. I said, as I said, I don't have that data for you guys. It just says white flowers, but it's a magic, magic concoction. The coconut here, yeah, you can smell the coconut, but it's not like um, it doesn't have sand and lotion vibes. It's not like Soleil Blanc, for example, or Virgin Island Waters from Crete. It's very nice, it's very beautiful, it's very feminine, ultra feminine. I wouldn't say this is an elegant fragrance, although you, powdery fragrances tend to be elegant in general. This in particular, I wouldn't say it's an elegant fragrance, but it's a super beautiful perfume. You should definitely try it. The coconut gives some creaminess as well slightly lactonic it's it's a magical concoction that truly deserves some love i never smell anything like this i think it's pretty groundbreaking although it's powdery but aside from the powdery note it is groundbreaking in terms of the smell it's really really beautiful it has orchid although it doesn't smell like orchid at all but honestly very few fragrances in the market truly smell like orchid 
and again many people complain about the typical montel dna which this fragrance has people say that it's very artificial and everything and synthetic i already talked about synthetic notes in my previous video so i don't want to bore you guys with that but make your own judgment don't believe what fragrantica says the people in fragrantica are saying or what youtubers are saying please make your own judgment the fragrance is absolutely beautiful and if you're looking for a feminine fragrance sexy fragrance and something that makes you feel cozy and ready for any occasion wearing this fragrance you will always feel put together what i can guarantee you is that you won't smell like everybody else and this is as i said pretty groundbreaking aside from the the powdery note it reminds me a little bit of Stella by Stella McCartney. The only difference, well, there are many differences, but it reminds me a lot. The difference is that Stella is more mature. It has a deeper type of awkward. Probably it's a darker type of rose. This doesn't even have rose. This is youthful. This is more playful, I would say. This smells like people like to say to compare it with the, with the doll's heads, like type of plasticky thing powdery thing but honestly it's delicious it's a borderline with um baby powder but super feminine super uplifting i love it give it a try orchid powder by montel so my next one guys is moon fever by memo paris i love memo paris as i said many times it's a great great house sometimes it's a hit or miss it's not the type of house that i love everything they do but i have to give them credit for the quality of their fragrances everything is really top notch you can smell the quality without even spraying the fragrance stunning stunning absolutely beautiful moon fever is a woody citrusy aromatic type of scent it has clary sage that's pretty prominent it's very citrusy in the opening, but it's slightly leathery and sweet and even musky in the dry down. It's delicious. It has lemon. It also has bitter orange. It has grapefruit. The grapefruit gives this fragrance a lot of brightness, especially in the opening. It also has neroli, which is the orange blossom oil. It also has tonka and it has leather, but the leather here, it's super, super toned down. I already talked about this fragrance in a previous video. Even if you don't like leather fragrances, you should still try this because believe me that leather is almost non-existent here. It gives the fragrance some depth and it gives the fragrance a little bit of creaminess because I think that more than leather, it's suede, what I smell here. And suede tends to be more buttery, softer. It's a more delicate type of leather, but it's, it's beautiful. It's a very linear fragrance. It doesn't change substantially aside from the bright citrusy opening transitioning into a um, powdery, musky, sweet, dry down. Aside from that, the fragrance doesn't change at all. It has really good sillage. It also has great lasting power. And projection is about two arm lengths, which I think it's pretty Everybody decent. Talk Everybody out. talks about Lalibella and African leather. Even Granada is becoming more popular now, but you should definitely try Moon Fever. This is a hidden gem. Yeah, Moon Fever by Memo Paris. So guys, the next one is Lil Fleur by Bayrido. Nobody talks about this, but I'm here to make this fragrance justice. I think it's beautiful. It's a very polarized type of scent. Team, you have team love and team hate, of course. <laughs> but in this particular case, it's super, super strong. The, the polarized opinions you get. It's again, please make your own judgment, okay? Get a decan. This is not a safe blind buy, but it's a beautiful scent. Of course, it's not for everybody. We all have different tastes, different skin chemistry, but still, I want you to do, I want you to make your own judgment. This is, to me, this is beautiful. It's very unique. It's the most different fragrance from Byredo I've ever smelled. Yeah, super, super unique. It has the typical clean, crisp, almost astringent Byredo DNA but it's totally different. This fragrance has saffron, it has cassis, it has leather, although the leather is super, super, super soft, super soft, and you can get a little bit more of the leather accord in the dry down, but it's not a leather scent by any means. It has rose, I think I said that. It also has ambergris, which I think this is why this fragrance is so powerful. This is a beast. 
although it's a very clean and crisp type of fragrance, projection is a beast. I, uh, let me tell you a story. I went to the post office, I needed to ship something. I was standing in the line and when it was my turn, the lady who was dispatching me asked me, oh my God, what are you wearing? And I said, what? What are you wearing or what are you shipping here? And I, I was totally caught off guard and I said, what, why are you asking? And she said, something smells divine here. What is this? And I told her what I was shipping, right? And she said, no, no, then it's you because I'm smelling such a great fragrance. And it was just when you came, when you approached the counter, right? She was wearing a mask. She was behind a screen and she could still smell this fragrance. And I remember that I just sprayed twice. And honestly, I was really not expecting to get any compliments or I just can't leave my home without a fragrance. And that's why I sprayed twice. I remember I only sprayed twice. And again, with the screen, with the mask and everything in between, she could still smell this fragrance. So it is very, very powerful in terms of projection. It lasts about six hours and Siage is strong as well. I would say seven, eight out of 10. It also has vanilla, it has ambergris. Ambergris, aside from being a note, it's used in perfumery as a fixative, and that's why this is probably such a beast. So this fragrance to me has only two faces. The opening is sharp, it's rosy, it's fruity, and then the dry down is like a woody scent and slightly, slightly leathery, but mostly woody, clean and crisp at the same time. It's very, very, it's a very typical Byrida scent, but on the other hand, it's super different from other Byrida fragrances, if it makes sense. I would love for you to try this. It's very unique. It's very unique, honestly. Make your own judgment. Don't forget about what you read over there. I would love for you to try this fragrance. It's a hit or miss. I think in this fragrance, it's more pronounce the, the polarized opinions, as I said at the beginning. So make your own judgment, but please get a decant and try this because it's beautiful. Lil Fleur by Byrida. So guys, my last one for today is a Amouage Reflection. So this fragrance is stunning. I can never get tired of wearing this. The first bottle I got was back in 2010. I absolutely adore this fragrance. It's amazing. There's nothing groundbreaking here. I would say there's nothing that I've never smelled before. In fact, I, it reminds me of something that I still can't pinpoint what is it. But still, this is very addictive to me. I never get tired of this fragrance. I get massive compliments. It's very aquatic. It's very dewy. It's perfect for scorching hot days, but it also performs really well under very cold weather. Like in, in the winter time, for example, especially winter nights, it becomes very crisp and very clean at the same time. While in summer, it becomes sweeter, a little bit more powdery and even fruity. Although it doesn't have any fruit in the composition, it does become fruity. It's very beautiful. It has water violets, it has freesia, it has magnolia, it has sandalwood, it also has amber, which together with the sandalwood give the fragrance a lot of depth and also that type of uh, cozy feeling at the same time. It's very nice, it's super, super beautiful. It's very refreshing, very invigorating at the same time. Get massive compliments every time I wear this. It's very feminine. I wouldn't say this is um, a unisex fragrance at all, but you can wear whatever you want, of course. This could be an entry-level niche fragrance if you're starting with your collection and you don't know how to start. I think this could be uh, an entry-level niche fragrance, especially from Amouage. Amouage is a house I really like. It's super high quality, super top notch, but some fragrances are a hit or miss. And honestly, they have really great fragrances, but it's never blamed by any fragrance in general, but especially from Amouage and Zershov, I think those are houses that you really need to test them first. But this one, it's pretty safe. If you like, sweet fragrances. This is sweet, but it's not cloying. But if you like youthful, sweet, um, fruity type of scents, this is for you. It doesn't have fruit in the composition, but it comes across as very, very fruity. And I don't know where this fruitiness is coming from, but it does have some fruit here for sure. Uh, so Siage and Projection are moderate, while Lasting Power is really good. It, I get eight hours, which to me is 
more or less fine beautiful scent you smell niche quality here and it is beautiful beautiful scent the bottle is reflective it's called reflection you have the male and female version and this is the female version absolutely beautiful give it a try so guys, this has been all for today. Be in the lookout for part two of fragrances that nobody talks about. And I will see you in my next video. I hope you enjoyed the content from today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it helpful. My mission is to be here to help you guide in making smart choices when you invest your money, right? Because fragrances can be expensive. It's not just a matter of buying niche or buying a super hype fragrance. I want you to be mindful when you make your purchases. And yeah, here I am. Leave me your comments down below if you have any questions and I will be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.